Hello, I'm Niall Murphy. I'm the manager of service for Armstrong's. Today, I'm here to discuss the outside mechanical seal replacement for our 4300 vertical inline pump series. The mechanical seal is the most critical service item in any pump. It's like you'll do many of them in your time. Close attention to this video will allow for ease of installation of a replacement seal in the field while paying attention to your personal safety. The Armstrong 4300 split coupling pump design allows for the mechanical seal to be replaced without disturbing any of the major pump components or removing the motor. To do this, you'll need just a few items from your toolbox. You'll need three hex drivers, otherwise known as Allen wrenches, sizes 1 8, 1 quarter, and 3 32 inch. In addition, you will need a 5 8, 9 16 open end box or ratchet wrench, a flathead screwdriver, a pair of pliers, a small pry bar, and a small amount of non metallic compound. A good routine is to set up a flat, clean surface near your work site where you can place your tools and all the parts as you remove them from the pump. This keeps parts you'll be reusing clean and in one convenient location. Begin by disconnecting power to the motor. Next, lock and seal the power supply so the motor cannot be accidentally energized while you work on it. This is particularly applicable when the power source is located in another area. Red tagging is a good idea for these applications. Close the isolating valves on both the suction and discharge sides of the pump. You can release the pressure in the pump casing by loosening the flush line air vent. You can ensure that the isolation valves are holding properly by relieving the pump pressure in this manner. Using the pliers and a flathead screwdriver, remove the nuts and bolts that hold the two halves of the coupling guard together. This will provide access to the split coupling. Now use the 5 8 inch wrench to undo the collar of the seal flush piping and remove the line. Using your Allen wrench, loosen the seal collar set screws. Once these are loosened, the seal collar should spring up slightly. Using the 3 8 inch Allen wrench, undo and completely remove the six socket head coupling bolts from the split coupling. Each of these bolts will also have a washer, so be sure you keep them together. When the six bolts have been removed, gently separate the coupling halves. Where possible, avoid using any tools to pry the halves apart because this may damage the coupling. Sometimes it may be difficult to take the coupling apart by hand. In order to do so, it might be a good idea to put a small screwdriver in between the gap in the coupling and pry them apart gently. Now be careful, of course, not to damage the precision bore. Remove the second half of the coupling. You'll notice that the pump shaft will drop down as you do this. Locate and remove both the motor shaft key and the pump shaft key. Place the 3 16 Allen wrench into the positioning hole on the shaft to keep it from rotating. And use a 5 16 open-ended or ratchet wrench to remove the cap screw, lock washer, and collar from the pump shaft. There is also a collar on the motor shaft. The position of this collar is factory set, so be sure for seal replacement that you do not remove the motor collar. Remove the mechanical seal rotating assembly by sliding it up the pump shaft and slipping it carefully through the gap between the motor and pump shafts. Using the 9 16 wrench, loosen and then remove the four bolts which hold the brass gland plate into position. Raise the gland plate and slide it through the gap between the two shafts. You should do a thorough examination of the gland plate at this point. Look for signs of unusual wear or scratches or burrs. If it is damaged, you'll need to replace it. Now remove the stationary seat and seat gaskets by sliding them up the pump shaft and slipping them through the gap between the two shafts. Let's unpack the new seal kit. Handle the stationary seat with care being certain not to contaminate the seal faces with dirt or even your fingerprints. The mechanical seal has a strip of packing tape around it to secure the holding clips. Do not remove the tape at this time. Replace the stationary seat, large gasket down, making sure that the seat flush hole is positioned toward the flush line connection. Now return the gland plate. 
it is very important to align the seal flush hole on the stationary seat with the seal flush hole on the gland plate. Place the gland plate bolts into the plate, tightening them just hand tight for the moment. It's critical for proper seating of the seal that these bolts are tightened evenly. Using a 9 16 inch wrench in a diagonal pattern, tighten each bolt a few turns at a time. Repeat the pattern until all the bolts have been completely tightened. Whatever you do, don't over tighten these bolts. Seriously over tightening them will strip the threads on a cast iron casing, and that's a very costly repair. Examine the new mechanical seal rotating assembly to ensure it's absolutely clean. It's very important to ensure you don't damage the O-ring of the mechanical seal. So feel for burrs on the shaft which could damage the O-ring before you install the new rotating assembly. Use some silicon lubricant, lightly lubricating the pump shaft, and then put a very tiny amount of lubricant on the rotating assembly O-ring. Slide the assembly carefully down the shaft onto the stationary seat. Do not tighten the set screws yet, and do not remove the packing tape. Replace the collar, lock washer, and cap screw, then insert the hex driver carefully into the pump shaft positioning hole, and tighten the cap screw. Apply a thin layer of non-metallic compound to one side of the motor shaft key and to the pump shaft key. Place these in position on the motor shaft and pump shaft. The compound will help keep the key in place while you install the split coupling. Identify the coupling half that is machined to receive the two shaft keys. Position the coupling so the machine side faces you and slide it behind the two shafts. Position the motor collar in the coupling. In order to connect the pump shaft collar to the coupling half, we're going to have to raise the shaft a little bit. In order to do that, I'm going to use an Allen key just to raise the shaft ever so slightly. Now in doing so, we're going to hear a nice connection. So you can see here I raise the shaft ever so slightly. I now have the two shaft collars located in the coupling half. I want to show you a little trick on how to raise a pump shaft with heavier impellers. Using a small piece of wood as your base, place the tip of your pry bar carefully under the pump collar and press down on the wood. The machine coupling half will set into place when you've raised the pump collar to the right height. You may have to rotate the shaft slightly to make sure the pump shaft key slips into the blind keyway in the coupling. Place the second coupling half into position and insert the coupling bolts and washers. Just hand tighten them at this point. Before you begin to tighten these bolts, you need to ensure that there's an even gap spacing between the two coupling halves. This is a critical requirement, so take your time to adjust the coupling halves so that the gap is the same on both sides of the shaft. Now take your half inch hex driver and begin to tighten the four bolts at the corners of the coupling. Tighten the bolts a few turns at a time in a diagonal pattern as shown, to ensure even pressure. After the four corner bolts are tight, tighten the remaining two. Finally, push down firmly on the mechanical seal to press it onto the stationary seat and tighten the set screws. Now you can remove the packing tape. If you set the seal at its proper working length, the holding clips should come away with the packing tape. Otherwise, you can flip them out with a small flathead screwdriver. There are occasions when you may want to reset the seal to the factory setting if the clips accidentally fall out prior to installation. To do this, depress the first step of the carbon until it's level with the collar. Then simply reinsert the clips. You'll now have a factory preset seal. Now replace and tighten the seal flush piping. Open the isolating valve on the suction side of the pump. Now slowly undo the vent plug on the flush line to bleed any air out of the pump housing. Open the isolating valve on the discharge side of the pump. When a steady stream of water appears from the vent, retighten it and check the seal area for any visible sign of leakage. Replace the coupling guard and bolt the two halves back together. Re-energize the motor by removing the lock and tag and reconnecting the power.